for wrapping up our house call segments this week, talking about heart failure, a problem that sends a lot of people to the hospital. So we want to kind of help you avoid that visit and the one after that. Dr. Daniel Bensimone is here. He's a cardiologist at LaBauer Heart Care and a member of the Cone Health Medical Staff. Good morning to you. Good morning, Brad. I think people are familiar with the problem, but we're talking about how it plays into a lot of other aspects, right? Right. I mean, people with heart failure t tend not to just have heart failure. They have many other problems. That contribute to it or that contributes to the other problems? It's kind of a big cycle? It, they can contribute to it, but most of all, it contributes to their problems with their daily life. It makes it harder for them to get around. They may have arthritis. It, they may be a little bit off balance. They are not have some weakness, and it just makes it hard for them to lead a productive life. Okay, so if you go to the hospital and you're having problems with your heart, and I, I gather that fluid buildup and things like that, once you're feeling good enough to get out of the hospital, that's where you kind of get concerned. Right, right. so I think a, a part of the problem is you have to realize the scope of the problem. For people over 65, heart failure is the number one reason for admission to the hospital. Okay. In the country, one million hospitalizations for heart failure across, across the country. At Cone, we have 100 a month. So by the time you get into the hospital, we take care of you, we get you tuned up, the chance that you're going to come back to the hospital within 30 days is about 20%. Really? So one in five. And then that's because of what? What are some, some factors? I mean, you know, are we not taking care of ourselves when we go home? Uh, do, do, do those other factors start creeping up in other ways? That's a great question. I mean, part of it is that people with heart failure, their fluid status changes day to day, depending mm -hmm. on what they eat, how much they drink. So you really have to teach these patients, how do I control that fluid status? How do mm -hmm. I take more medicines? But there are a lot of other things. If their fluid status gets a little low and they, they happen to get a little dizzy and they fall down and hurt themselves, that's another reason just to come back to the hospital. You know, there's a lot of conversation about health care, money, things like that. The, the best way to deal with health care is to keep, keep health, keep those people out of the hospital. If you're a caregiver, you should really be involved in their recovery at that point, don't you think? Right. You know, the government's put a big emphasis on this, and so has Cone. Cone has been really, really proactive. We've developed a very uh, big network of people who go out, congregational nurses, mm -hmm. home health nurses, who go out to the home as soon as they get out of the hospital and start assessing their needs. Let's keep what you healthy. What, what are the things? And, and, and that Absolutely. answer could be different for different people, couldn't it's it? It's very different from different people. Some people have a great social support. They get it. You tell them once Whether it be they kids get it. or neighbors or something like that. Absolutely. And then I'm, I'm gathering some people don't have that. That's exactly right. So we send a pharmacist, we send a nurse, whatever they need to kind of bridge the gap for them. And you know, Cone's done great. The national average for these readmissions is 20, 22 percent. Within six or seven months of doing this program, we're down to 12 percent here. So you're almost half at where you were. And, and literally keeping people, and you talk about controlling costs or whatever, you, you know it's expensive. Being, to keep them out of the hospital is, is not only good for them, it's good for the, it, it, it kind of makes the whole system work a little better, and you're not tying up your time on people who are kind of in that cycle of coming in the hospital. Right, I mean, when you get into the hospital, that's a sentinel event. When you come into the hospital for heart failure, that's a sentinel event that things are going wrong with your care. If you look at the data, one third of people who come into the hospital for heart failure die within a year. Wow. So you want to get those patients, you want to take care of them, and you want to put the resources making them feel better and live longer. So you've got a program in place, and, and you, I guess, monitor, you have these people checking up on, 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 on their status, right. right? We not only monitor them, we have ways to monitor them at home with, with uh, remote monitors and things, but we also teach them to monitor themselves. Okay. We give them scales, they know when to call back, and even if somebody's going to go to a nursing facility, we call and we work with the nursing facility, tell them this is what we need to know about. And, and, but you talk about them knowing their own status, they know how to recognize problem signs. Absolutely. We give them a chart and say every morning you get up, you write your weight down, um, you t write what medicines you've taken down, and then if there's a problem, you call us. Is that kind of the wave of the future? Not so much technology, but people knowing how to manage themselves and manage care? Well, I think the wave of the future is com how can technology help do that even better? Right. But really empowering people to take better care of their, their heart failure and other diseases as well. Okay. Thank you very much for telling us. We, we talk a lot of times about things that are very complex and surgery and things like that. This is simple. This is, yeah. This, this is, is simple. It's very, and, and, and it works. This You've is, got the numbers to show that it works. It's just caring and close follow-up. That's all it is. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate Great. you telling us about it. Thank you. We're back in just a moment here on Fox 8. It's 20 past the hour.